The boys tell me he was going to have a birthday. Sometimes you must wonder Who on earth I really am Sometimes you must wonder Who on earth I really am Woke up with a lion when you had laid down with a lamb. Lighthouse Knighton, Nehemiah Persaud. Fernando. Okay, okay, okay. How was the draw? The first bull, perfect, very comfortable. Oh, they're saying that Manolete is going to be We have bull. no time. I might look for him. Start looking now. But I won't find him, Manolo. You know that. I have to look because there's nothing else for me. He said, Manny, it's a book for a hold-up. Yeah. The associated life. Yeah. Yeah, you know, the office down here. The office it is? I can't imagine. Oh, they'll find out he isn't guilty. Well, everybody knows he couldn't be guilty. Oh. How can a thing like that happen? Something sure went wrong. Well, somebody's got to tell him. We'll go there tomorrow. I tell you that you sang beautifully. I, I never heard you sing better. I was terrible, I know it. My voice was shaking like my knees. So what? Don't you know that it's good luck to have a bad dress rehearsal? You ask anybody in show That's business. The... You, you pull over. Take me to the garden. ship's log is the sailing time, course to destination, weather conditions, temperature, longitude, and latitude. But what is never recorded in a log is the fear that washes over a deck like fog and ocean spray. Fear like the throbbing strokes of engine pistons. They're cops. <laughs> They'll kill you if you run. I didn't do nothing. I didn't do nothing. arrested the wrong man. Well, if I did... Maddie, there he is. Okay, give him a drink. I'm on my way in. Gentlemen, Mr. Peters, I wonder if you're familiar with the New York State Penal Code, Section 1897? I haven't read any good books lately. Do you know what, Bonnie? I'm sorry for you. We better call a cop. The guy's flipped. Do you think I can? Oh, darling, let's at least try. Thank you. 
fell out, brother lovers. It's been ten years since I elected myself president of this organization. And if I say so myself, you made the right choice. <laughs> Let's look at the record. In the last fiscal year, we made $112 million before taxes. Only we ain't paying no taxes. <laughs> of course, like in every business, we had our little misunderstandings. Uh, let us now rise and observe one minute of silence in memory of seven of our members from Chicago, Northside Chapter, who are unable to be here with us tonight on account of being robbed out. You too, Spats. Huh? Easy now. You know when you come out? Yeah. Second time they sing. For he's a jolly good fellow, which nobody can deny. Okay. Now, fellow delegates, there comes a time in the life of every business executive when he starts thinking about retirement. Oh. Yes. I'm looking around for somebody to fill my shoes. I've been considering several candidates. For instance, there's a certain party from Chicago, Southside Chapter. Now, some people say, He's gotten a little too big for his spats. But I say, he's a man who'll go far. Some people say, he's gone too far. But I say, you can't keep a good man down. Of course, he's still got a lot to learn. That big noise he made on St. Valentine's Day, that wasn't very good for public relations. And let them two witnesses get away. That sure was careless. Don't worry about those two guys. They're as good as dead. I almost caught up with them today. You mean you let him get away twice? Some people would say that's real sloppy. But I say to her is human to forgive divine. And just to show you what I think of you spats, the boys tell me you was going to have a birthday. So we baked you a little cake. My birthday? Why, it ain't for another four months. So, Willie Lurley, so what's a few months between friends? All right, boys, now all together. For oh, he's a jolly good fellow, for oh, he's a jolly good fellow, for oh, he's a jolly good fellow, which nobody can deny, which nobody can deny, which nobody can deny. For oh, he's a jolly good fellow, for oh, he's a jolly good fellow, for oh, he's a jolly good fellow. Big joke. A very unhappy future for you. I have a little prediction for you too, Faustini. It's all over. I'll take that. You've already taken it a long way. When's the payoff tonight? How much? The clouds will lift, madame. That I predict. But when? How soon? Even Faustini does not know. Very soon, let us hope. Let us hope. Distressing! Oh, cosmos, oh, universe! Why? Why so cover the darkness? Faustini predicts an end to your problems! Carlos! Ha <laughs> ha! Carlos for 
God they invited me to run this club here, so I came. It's a very nice place, huh? And on a certain night in this very room, the law, it spelled scandal. And I was there for you, too. We all love you, Charlie. You're a peculiar duck, but in a free country, that's your right. Charlie, from now on, all your troubles on my back. Think about that. No more worries for you from now on. Oh, how I envy your peace of mind. happened. The reason. No this door the day after you were born. All the purity and strength went into Julius. All the crap that was left over went into what you see in the mirror every morning. Whoa, 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 you tell me I'm the crap? No, uh, this is not true, well, Vincent. Wait a minute, Julius, I want to hear this. You tell me that I am the leftover crap, that I'm no good? He's wrong. Look at him. Are you saying that a side effect? You haven't got the brain power to understand this, and I haven't got the time. Show's over. Hey, dickhead. Tell us where our mother is. Um, Whispering Pines. It's an artist colony 200 miles north of Santa Fe. If you're lying to me, I'll be back. An American tale. Fievel goes west. My Fievel. I thought I would never see you again. Never say never, Papa. Oh. <laughs> oh, I nearly forgot. Here, Fievel, your hat. Let's go. There is opportunity, Old West. Maybe they have a better appreciation of singers out there. So what are we fiddling around here for? Oh. Let's go west, partners. <laughs> You would like a sample of this wine. Hmm? It's nice, rich, red wine. What do you mean? I fear you have been very stupid, General. Very stupid indeed. And you are no longer useful now that our little masquerade has ended. And see that the engine crew is well taken care of. Don't let them run along. Let nobody let this down. They will remember. And who invited you here? I did, Father. Did you now? What a touching thing for a blushing maiden to do. Asking a young man to visit the family circle. If I'd have known you were coming, I'd have seen to it that the parlor was tidied with fresh antimacassars put on the furniture. Your daughter wrote to us that you know the whereabouts of Colonel Tacitus Mosley. You told him where?
I've raised her never to let personal emotion interfere with a judgment, which is what you're doing at this moment. Gentlemen, you come among us uninvited. I hope I'm not intruding. Mr. McBain, I'd like to invite you to join us for dinner tonight. Uh, Gordo, give them some refreshments. Ah, uh, oh, what a shame. It looks like company's not coming. Mr. McBain, would you mind handing over your pistol? I hear that you have been seeing a great deal of Teresa Comargo. Well, yes, I guess I have. Oh, she's a lovely girl, to your good taste. Thank you. Mm. Mm. And to you? To the Barclays. And most important, to my dear friend, your mother. Thank you, General. In the shed. No. Huh? Uh, you will do as you told. I am through doing for you. So is my mother. What? We don't want you to come here anymore. You don't want me to come here anymore, huh? I will teach you a lesson that you will never forget. Hey, you little cacahuate! <laughs> Little puppy! Who are you? He is the reason we are both through doing for you. And he is also dead. If I could learn to shoot like you, I would have had the lead in standing cow daughter of Sitting Bull. There is nothing to it. Prosecuting an attorney rubbed out. Number one, number two is not enough for you. You had to have number three. Man, you really flipped out this morning. What is this? One, two, three. That's our job. That's number three. Grab out your pal. Your buddy. Harry. Over Harry. ten years I've been with you. Ten years, Joe. I wasn't planning no double cross. But you run everything upside down and backwards. And it comes out the same. One, two, three. All right, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to blow the whistle on you. You're making a mistake, Harry. No, no, you're the one that's making a mistake, Joe. Yeah. Give him the money. Then kill him. Anton Wojeska, daughter O'Deed, owns a short order place on South Third. Mr. Wojcicki? Jenny, take care of the customer. I'm not hungry, thank you. My name is Mannix. You called me a couple of weeks ago, and I recommended a private investigator named Henderson. Yes, yeah, so I hired him. Something's wrong. Can we talk? San Francisco with guest stars Nehemiah Persoff
I love Papa. Twenty-two million people in the state of California say that that's been paid. Why can't you? Huh? How do you pay a debt like that, huh? How do you crush that from your memory, huh? I think every day of the father of the poor children that you killed, and I cry inside. I think of the two little babies lying on the street after you hit them with your car. And I think how they could have lived if you had only stopped to help them a little bit. I think of all of that and I cry inside. And I cry because your birth, your birth brought their death. And I cry because I love you and I don't want to. I don't want to! Carl Sims, Department of Immigration. Ah, Mr. Sims, I'm uh, Captain Miller. Italian and Irish? Ah, uh, no. Mediterranean. <laughs> A little. Uh, it's a hobby of mine. Would you uh, <laughs> like to uh, step in my office? Fine. I understand you have some uh, legal entry. I'm not sure what we've got. Vietnamese. Omaha. <laughs> this is Sergeant Yamana. This is Mr. Uh, Stefanos, Mrs. Stefanos. This is Mr. Sims, Department of Immigration. Pleased to meet you. Yeah. Yes, I know. Uh, this way. They're always so pleased to meet me. They think I have the power of life and death over them. It's going to be difficult to prove that this marriage is purely for the purposes of illegal entry. Of course. It's difficult. It's always difficult to be the one person responsible for 290,000 immigrants into this country every year. What am I, God? Well, I, I appreciate your problem, Mr. Do you know what it's like to look into their pathetic hoping faces? And to say, you stay. You go. You live, you die. Do you know what it's like dealing with 290,000 huddled masses yearning to be free? Oh, sure. Give me your tired and your poor. Big talk from a statue. <laughs> Um, how, how many? Around 2,000. We never took a head count. And I resent the way all you two stick together. Boy, you really are a bigoted old bastard, aren't you? It's a free country, Mr. Cobb. I'm entitled to my opinion. He called me a Nazi pig. And are you? Objection. Argumentative. Could you rephrase, Mr. Glass? Mr. Reichel, were you a Nazi? Uh, during the period 1937 to 1945, I was a member of the Nazi party, yes. But you were more than just a mere member, weren't you? You were a soldier. I was a Brigadefuhrer of a tank unit. In the Wehrmacht? The Waffen-SS. Which division, please? The Totenkopf. Would you translate that, please? That's it. Your Honor! This is extremely prejudicial. Overruled, Miss Kaufman. I don't recall. <laughs> you don't recall? I don't recall. You started with 4,000, you ended with two. Maybe three. A thousand non-military casualties in a month. It was wartime. I made the humane decision. Did you watch? Were you even there for this humane action? Did they dig their own graves? Did you have the bodies stripped after this humane action? 
Or was there anything left to steal after you robbed them of their life and their dignity? <clears throat> Were any of them able to look you Stop in the it. eye before they died? Stop it! <laughs> Ten minute recess. <laughs> Sir, do you have any medical training? I've performed over 3,000 circumcisions. When I directed Yentl, it was fantastic for me because I was able to have a father for a while. I actually had a father for a while. A father who I think would have been like my father, who would have taught me. Get the book. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Papa. Thank you, Papa. Thank you, Papa. The shutters, darling. You don't have to hide my studying from God, then why from the neighbors? Why? Because I trust God will understand. I'm not so sure about the neighbors. I chose Nehemiah Persoff because I thought he was a wonderful actor and he also had such warmth and kindness. It's a different experience, I'm sure, for an actor to work with someone who's also directing them because they're looking at me as an actress, but they also know that I'm going to give them notes after the scene. Let's just do one very, very simple. Don't I hear the acting. Yeah, push okay, me. okay. Don't yeah. push anything. Yeah. Too much tears? Yeah. Yes, please. What the advantage is that sometimes because I'm in the scene with them and the camera's over my shoulder, I can improvise with them and get something out of them right at the moment. I just do that last moment. I thank thee forever and ever. And then kiss my head and then say, forgive me, God, forgive me. Thou hast given me a daughter who brings me great pride and pleasure. For this kindness, I thank thee forever and ever. Ladies and gentlemen, Nehemiah Persoff. <laughs>